Greetings, human toy collector. This is internet personality Evangelist, and on the cusp of the release of Earthrise, I am going to take a look at one of the first wave voyagers from Siege. This is Optimus Prime, a general in the trading card game, and I'm sure you won't disappoint him by being under the age of 13 while watching this video. Generations is, after all, a collector line, and collectors are, after all, adults who make very smart decisions. The Generations War for Cybertron trilogy was announced to begin with Siege, which takes place on Cybertron. Imagine our surprise when that meant one of the most G1-ass G1 Optimus Prime robot modes ever would be among the initial reveals. Despite never having seen the planet Earth, this Optimus treads a close line to 2019's other major non-movie Peter Cullen, MP44. Aside from a backpack plank and a couple things under his forearms, it's hard to not see a micro-sized late 2010s masterpiece robot aesthetic in this piece. And I mean, yeah, in More Than Meets CI, Optimus also looked like this before we ever saw Earth, but like, it's an 80s cartoon, and I, this is already becoming a discussion, isn't it? I, this needs to stop. Well, okay, this is very late 2010s masterpiece, if you ignore all the splatter. Siege's global visual motif is battle damage, and on Optimus Prime, that means splatter. Silver splatter. Optimus rides this out decently by spreading the splatter. Okay, I'm gonna stop saying splatter. By spreading the juices across his shoulders, forearms, thighs, and pectoral underbreasts. The most objective issue here is that it's only on one side or one flat panel of any one of those pieces, which diminishes the naturality of the effect as soon as you notice it. These are like geometric shapes, and only one of the sides of the shape has this paint job on it. I don't know if this is explaining it enough, I'm gonna keep going. Other Siege bullet points on this figure include copious 5mm ports for COMBAT readiness, as well as the presence of three millimeter pegs often made to blend in and not stand out as they are meant to allow you to apply the lines sometimes included visual effect parts, which Optimus does not include any of. For accessories, Optimus has his ion blaster, as he always tends to when he looks this 1980s. He's also got a rather thick shield, or maybe it's more of a buckler. Either way, between Siege and Cyberverse, this has apparently become his new favorite thing that he's now always done. The shield can also transform into an axe, which is neither orange nor made of energy, but does have a well-sized blade and can mount on a forearm to almost come out of his wrist if you ignore how it's floating next to his wrist and his hand is still there. Spoilers, this is good articulation. Ball socket head. It's got all this waggle. This, this little platform sometimes moves up and down. Luckily, the wiggle room's only that much. So if you're bothered by the gap, it's an easy fix. Anyway, look, he can look like up. He can tilt. He can look side to side as well, but surely you, you already know that's gonna happen. His arms can, uh, you know, do the whole, what? You know, we're, we're on the cusp of a new era of YouTube here. What's up with this? Why would you ever, I don't know. Okay, I guess I could see like back here, that can be helpful. Anyway, it does that. It goes outwards as well. This thing gets out of the way. Uh, bicep swivel and an elbow bend. That elbow is just past 90 degrees. So we got us a case of some elbow articulation quality going on and a wrist swivel on a modern Voyager. Ooh, uh, the waist moves like that. There's no ab crunch, but there's it's all the stuff in here. You already know why there's no ab crunch. Surely there's there's things, there's, there's wheels just waiting to spill out of his kidneys. Like, you can't fit an ab crunch in there. The uh, legs can kick forwards and backwards. They can't high kick. They can't kick, like, super forward like this. Um, and this thing doesn't move out of the way at all. There's no skirt articulation. But uh, I don't really mind that because the knee bends all heck like that. The thigh swivels all... Okay, not actually a whole bunch, but then right down here above the knee bend, there is another like long boot cut above here. So it's like two different thigh swivels. Uh, the knee, like I said, like that's that's basically a double jointed bend. That's some good stuff. You kick this up here and it looks like he is, uh, let me push the backpack off, put a jetpack on there or something. He's ready for liftoff. Uh, this thing does lock in. It's just very easy to bop out of the way when you're being all animate in front of a camera for an articulation segment. And the ankles, like look at that. Yes, big open cut. You gotta deal with that, but that's some ankle tiltage. There is no forward or back, but with these two things both being articulate for the transformation, uh, they can't bend past to this flat-footed stance, but you can bend the heel up a bit, which can fake having the, the foot tilted forward somewhat while having still a balanced uh, stance. It's very helpful stuff. This is good articulation. Uh, he can't, like I said, kick super high forward, but it's 
Uh, if that's the only limitation, then I'm cool with it. This is a fun action figure of Optimus Prime to mess with who also happens uh, to turn into a truck, and his turning into a space truck explains a whole lot of the bits that are maybe not swoosh as cool. So I spend time describing all kinds of vague nebulous things and not as cool when I'm literally just talking about that not being able to kick like up to here. And I completely forget to mention that due to the transformation, he not only has this forward and backwards thing, he's got like a reverse butterfly as well, which is huge in my opinion. This is the kind of thing that can take a simple action figure uh, who is like jumping and now he is, he is thrusting himself into action. Uh, that's a really cool touch up here. And uh, I think it's very helpful for posing. Like the the emotion in the poses on this guy are uh, are solid. Like you get something with the uh, the hips thrust back out and the legs back and the the shoulders butterflied back slightly, like this. And then you can keep him standing like this by tilting the the heel part down a little bit. Ah, oh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. One of the small and unexpected things that keeps my interest peaked this decade is just how many ways designers and engineers can get an Optimus Prime's torso and arms to form a red box that's dragging a truck bed made from his legs. I don't mean that as a dig, it's fun to see how that basic structure has been tweaked in so many different directions, and Siege's Voyager Prime manages to season its own take with some absolutely narcotic tactile feedback. The hand feel is silent for the most part until the bit where you start to interlink all the cab's red panels. As they lace together, there are these moments, these chain of quiet plastic frictions that slip together with deafening satisfaction. If I could bottle these panel connections into a fragrance, it would smell real good. That's not to say the legs don't do their own cool stuff. I like the flippity flippity coming out of the shins and calves. I slightly less so like the kneecap panels as they're kind of stiff and easy to forget. Oh, and everything ends on one last cab panel interlink, like a pleasant dessert aperitif after a gourmet main. He may not be the most egregious, but Optimus Prime is a solid representation of the funniest extreme of Siege's vehicle modes. This is basically the fuzzy shape of 1984 Optimus Prime's truck cab with stuff attached to it. Alien stuff. The lower set of lights have been flipped 90 degrees and replaced with tiny Vulcan cannons. Translucent blue plastic implies glowing lights above them, as well as glowing windows and a glowing grill. And hey, there's another set of glowing lights up top. Eyebrows style. I had a laugh at this for weeks on WTF at TFW, but in person, it does come off a lot more smoothly and a lot less bolted on. Getting even more alien, all the wheels can hinge around to switch Optimus from rolling truck mode to hover truck mode. High Moon Studios nostalgia. This is definitely intentional, from official artwork seen in the TCG, to the way the wheels all lay flat in alignment, to the perfect placement of Prime's 3mm stand port. You can even pose the wheels at angles and stuff, so it's like they're pulling a hover corner. On the subject of ports, this truck's got a bunch of them in 5mm size. You may recall several from their previous appearance in robot mode. The biggest notable addition is the trailer hitch placed peg hole that allows for the stacking of Prime's accessories, partly thanks to a port atop the ion blaster, and results in the cutest little wannabe trailer since the last time a bunch of accessories stacked on the back of an Optimus Prime alt mode. The biggest problem with Siege Voyager Optimus Prime is that this really solid Transformers figure is also Optimus Prime. Okay, take two steps back with me. I don't care, myself, that it's another Optimus Prime, as fresh designs and toolings are generally entirely separate entities to me and my tastes. But I've seen many a friend sigh with the annual Optimus Prime fatigue, especially in 2019 with the tandem build to release of MP44, so I gotta acknowledge that. Otherwise, I don't know, the battle damage paint is a limp waffle? There's both a 35th anniversary edition and a repro label set, both of which solve this issue in their own ways, depending what your taste is. And in the next line, there's a whole new fresh Optimus who, at great pre-release distance as of this recording where I didn't watch that one video so far, takes the whole alien truck idea and tweaks that much more towards familiar territory. Siege Voyager Optimus is a fantastic piece on its own, with two solid modes, great articulation, and a lovely transformation. The whole Transformers package. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and my own attachment to this figure came in the course of pulling its matching TCG Wave 3 rare character card no less than seven or eight times from boosters during that wave. I mean, it's a solid card.
And there's also the part where I got it really early because Hasbro Toy Shop had a glitch where Canadians could use the free shipping and some percent off coupon and they shipped everything in multiple packages and we certainly cost Hasbro Toy Shop a whole lot of money and that code certainly never was free for Canadians again. Ah well. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to keep supporting this channel beyond viewership, make sure you've hit all the buttons you can and follow the social media of some kind. There are further means if that's your flavor, such as Patreon or coffee. Check the description for links and check your chest for silver paint splatter.